The KC-46 tanker program has been lined with problems in recent years, but even with that, there are opportunities on the horizon. Defense News Air Warfare reporter Valerie Encina has been covering the program and is here to fill us in. The KC-46 is the Air Force's newest aerial refueling tanker, which is the airplane that the Air Force uses to give all of its other planes fuel while they're flying around. Um, it's made by Boeing, which got the contract in 2011, and it's based off of one of Boeing's commercial airliners. So the thought was at the time, this is going to be easy to modify a commercial aircraft and to do this mission, and it's just not turned out to be that way. There's been a bunch of problems. Boeing has, has had to pay more than $5 billion to fix all of these problems so far. Things like wiring problems, there's a problem with the boom that makes it unable to refuel A-10 warthogs. There's a problem with its remote vision system, which the boom operators use uh, while they're conducting a refueling to see outside of the aircraft. So even though this was sort of considered to be maybe uh, seemed very simple at the outset, there's just been a ton of problems and, and, and Boeing has kind of been left holding the bag on them. There are two new uh, critical problems on the KC-46. One of them has to do with the aircraft's flight navigation system. Basically, software errors are popping up that um, are messing with the aircraft's navigation system. Boeing is going to have to create a software fix for that. And the other problem has to do with the refueling receptacle, uh, which, which stores gas when the KC-46 is being refueled, um, there is some cracking happening in the drain system of that uh, whenever the KC-46 is flying in very, very cold uh, conditions. So Boeing is having to redesign those, those tubes to fix that problem. So these issues were found just as the Air Force started reaching out to industry about its next aerial refueling tanker, which is calling KCY. This is a competition that's really still in its in infancy. Um, the Air Force wants to start buying tankers around 2027 after it's done buying the KC-46. It'll probably buy around 150 tankers or so, but it's been very unclear about the road to get there. Um, when it might make a decision uh, among the different competitors, um, and then also how many is its ulti ultimate end state in terms of how many it's going to buy. So it looks like the competition is going to come down to the same two companies that competed in the previous tanker competition, Airbus and Boeing, and they're going to be bringing the same two planes that they brought for the previous competition, Boeing's KC-46 and the Airbus A330. So even though Boeing has had all of these problems with the tanker, it's still pretty confident going into the KCY competition because it assumes that over the next couple of years, it's going to be able to fix all of these problems. The Air Force is going to start using it on a regular basis. Their pilots are going to become trained and proficient in how to use this tanker. The Airbus aircraft, the A330, it might not have the problems that the KC-46 has right now, but in a couple of years, if the KC-46 is performing, Airbus is going to have to make an argument about why it's worth training a bunch of pilots and boom operators how to use that different system instead of the KC-46, and why it's worth it to have two different types of aircraft and having to maintain those different types of aircraft. Looking forward, both Boeing and Airbus are going to be giving more information to the Air Force about their tankers, and hopefully the Air Force is going to provide more information about what they want to see out of the KCY. And of course, I'll be keeping on top of the whole thing, and you can find my coverage at defensenews.com. Thanks, Valerie. And now for industry headlines. The German Defense Ministry has forwarded a request to lawmakers seeking approval for almost $5.3 billion that would pay for the country's contribution to the next stage of the future combat air system. Lawmakers on the Bundestag's Budget and Defense Committees are scheduled to consider the request that would cover research and technology development between 2021 and 2027. During that time, officials want to begin regular test flights with a demonstrator constructed under the auspice of France's Dassault Aviation. The spending request comes after France quote-unquote categorically rejected an intermediate bridging phase in the German Franco-Spanish program. That's according to the justification package forwarded by the Finance Ministry. 
Berlin has floated such a scenario given that the coronavirus pandemic has delayed completion of a joint concept study as well as the ongoing development. The program national lead companies are Dassault for France, Airbus Defense and Space for Germany, and Indra for Spain. The U.S. Department of Defense awarded Verizon Public Sector a $495 million contract to deliver the network that connects 200 research labs and supercomputer locations. That's according to a company announcement. Verizon will provide the department with switches, routers, firewalls, and edge compute capabilities for the Department of Defense's research and engineering network and its high-performance computing modernization program. The contract has a four-year base with three two-year options. The Defense Research and Engineering Network is a high-speed fiber optic network that allows military supercomputers and researchers to collaborate on their efforts. And that's it for industry news this week. When we return, personal finance expert Jeanette Mack gives us insight on money moves to make during an economic recovery.